Baby, be your love with your fantasies. I can be your star, make a sky so bright. Welcome to my dungeon. This is ecstasy. Let me play the fantasy. What's good, YouTube? It's your girl, Asia. And it's your boy, BJ. And, and we, we all back, back like, like we, we never, never left. left. Y'all, we got to go ahead and jump into this video. Yeah. We appreciate y'all for tuning in. Appreciate y'all for supporting the channel as well. Now, with this video, we're going to be checking out Matt Walsh. He's going to be breaking down his viral moment on the Dr. Phil show. Yeah. So, he was having a debate with someone. So, mm. I'm not sure exactly what it was about. Okay. Uh, but, but let's tap in. Let's check it out. Okay. You ready? Let's go. For those who were able to watch it, my appearance on Dr. Phil aired yesterday afternoon. Uh, it was my first time appearing on television outside of Fox News and also my first time meeting with a psychologist. Some would say that I should make more of a regular <clears throat> habit of it, talking to a psychologist, I mean, not appearing on TV. <laughs> but unfortunately, not everybody was able to watch the discussion, I'm told. In some, market, in some markets, it was sidelined by President Biden's press conference. I think we can all agree that of all the terrible things Biden has done during his disastrous tenure, Preempting my Dr. Phil episode is by far the worst. <laughs> now, there's always a certain risk inherent in walking into an environment like this, especially with the cameras rolling. Of course, I knew that I would be outnumbered on stage in front of a hostile studio audience. And if I had been invited to speak about a more complicated or difficult issue, one that requires you to actually be smart, then um, that would have given me pause. But the topic of the episode was gender and pronouns, which means that it's not complicated or difficult at all. My position, the correct position, is extremely simple, sensible, obvious, and clear. The only mistake that somebody on my side of the issue can make, and very often people do make this mistake, in a debate of this kind, is to make the subject seem more complicated than it is. Getting lost in the rhetorical weeds and losing sight of the main point. That, that's where the other side lives. They're out there in the weeds where things are muddy and muddled. They like it out there. They want to obscure the main point, mystifying what is actually quite simple. Hmm. As long as you refuse to be baited into that trap and you stay on message, on the firm ground of truth and science and common sense, you can have this conversation anywhere with anybody on any platform in front of any audience, and you will walk away the winner every time. And if you're a naturally argumentative bastard like myself, you'll even have fun doing it. Now, that gives you an idea of my basic strategy. So now we'll watch some, some clips of a, a few of the most important exchanges during the episode, and, and we'll see how it played out. We'll begin with the opening salvo, which uh, came several minutes into the episode, as the first segment featured just the two non-binary diversity consultants mm. spewing inane garbage unopposed. And I was backstage for that portion, just pacing back and forth, listening in horror, muttering incredulously to myself. And when it was my turn... I began by clarifying that everybody that that you know everything that was said in the previous segment was total nonsense, hmm. and then we dived into the pronoun question. Let's watch. Yeah, pull it up. There should be no construct of gender, just sex. You're either male or female, right? And someone feeling, in a mental, emotional way, that they don't identify with the sex that they have been biologically created as and assigned at birth based on man that beard is heavy mm. what is that beard oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> their genitalia if they don't feel that way that there's no construct that describes that experiences that well, that's got nothing to do with the reality. So you can feel however you want. I mean, I could sit here and say that I feel like a tomato plant, but that doesn't mean that I actually am those things. So your, your self-perception, you can have whatever self-perception you want, but you can't expect me to take part in that self-perception or to take part in this kind of charade, this theatrical production. You don't get your own pronouns, just like you don't get your own prepositions or your own, your own adjectives. You know, mm. It's like if I were to tell you, my adjectives are handsome and brilliant. And no matter, whenever you're talking about me, you have to describe me as handsome and brilliant because that's how I identify. Makes no sense. You don't get your own pronouns. These are, that's, that's, that's grammar. That's language. So you think it's a delusion? Someone is self-delusional? Yeah, I think it's, it's delusion. It could be a mental illness. It could be a, it's, it's a lot of different things. With, with children, wow. you know, there, there's also hmm. just a basic confusion that all kids have. Like, that's why when you hear, when you, when you hear someone, a parent say, oh, my four-year-old... Uh, son came came to me and said that uh, I'm a girl now, and so that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna raise him as a girl. Mm. Now, 
you know, Matt Walsh, he's, I don't want to veer off too far from it, but what Matt, Matt Walsh is talking about right now in regards to, like, even talking about children in an early age kind of identifying with their own sex. And, like, I remember, I remember saying that with, like, Dwayne Wade and, like, Gabrielle Union, where they kind of, like, pretty much gave Dwayne Wade's son, like, an like a, a option or kind of, pretty much just kind of, like, let him kind of find it on his own. So if he felt like he wanted to identify with a woman, it, it was almost like they kind of was was for it. Like, you know what I mean? I, like, I'm, like, but the thing like is, they didn't try to, like, steer him or try to, like, maybe give him, you know, give him, like, an identity in regards to sexuality. They kind of let him find it on his own, and then they just embraced it based on how he already kind of identified with himself. I think that was, that's the way it should be, unfortunately. I mean, I, because I wouldn't want to force somebody to be something. <clears throat> like, I feel like that is part of the problem, like, especially with, with you know, uh, you know, just just in terms of, Anyone who gay, lesbian, trans, like whatever you want to want to identify as, but like if you okay. are trying to force somebody to be something that they don't feel inside, that that's who they want to identify as, like I feel like that's when you start having issues because and and part of the problem with that is like you know kids grow up today is because they don't want to tell their family, they don't want to come out and say, they don't want to like, and then they have all these problems because they've been living this fake life mm -hmm. but, because that's not who they are but and they what, haven't ever been that way but my thing is like helping a child identify that when they're like four or five three four five years old maybe mm -hmm. like to help them identify but i i i, that's I don't know like the science behind it so I, i'm not really gonna speak on that i do agree that maybe you should help them identify that if they don't know but i feel like also at that point if your child doesn't know if they're a boy or a girl at three, four, five, like and when, when children are three, four, five, I think they know. I, I, I feel like they know, but they're still trying to identify it's, it's in regards to mannerism, how I act as a male, how I act as a female, like those well, types you, of well, things. Well, you teach them those things along the way, but I'm saying, like, if you have a boy that wants to put on dresses, absolutely not. Then, that's an absolute no. <laughs> That's but, what I'm, I'm saying. but I'm saying if the boy wants to put on dresses, obviously the boy knows that he's a boy. But he's like, I want to wear a dress. Like I feel like he would know that boys don't wear dresses, but he wants to wear a dress because yeah. he wants to dress like a girl. Oh y'all, y'all, y'all get y'all drop the comments, y'all. Let us know but, what y'all thinking right now. Let us know. But that doesn't make it right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make it right. I, I'm not saying. I, I just feel like because for the parents out there that have gay gay children mm -hmm. like they embrace it because because it, it i i just feel like it will it will cause a, a lot of issues long term than it is for you to keep trying to go against it and, and butt heads with something that feels natural to them like if it feels natural to them then then i don't i can't i, I can't fight that yep. but that doesn't make you a girl because you want to be a girl you want gotcha. to dress like a girl you're not a girl yeah i don't know <laughs> I don't know about that one. I can't, hey. But I'm... I don't know about that. I mean, I know it doesn't sound good, but I'm just saying, like, I feel like if parents have gay children, then they do embrace it. And and at some point, it's just like, you just have to let that go and, mm. and, and be okay with it because your kid is not that way. And if gotcha. you don't do it, then the, the long-term effects are much more, you know, traumatic in a sense yeah. and, and have much more long-term effects than it is for somebody that naturally wants to grow up and be a girl because I feel like kids just learn that as they go. I got you. I need somebody to chime in on this one right here. Yeah. What we talking about right here. I need y'all to chime in on that. Oops. So you're, you're a four-year-old. I have four kids. When a four-year-old boy comes to you and says, oh, I'm a girl, here's a good follow-up question. What is a girl? Ask him what he means by that. What do you mean by a girl? And when you, when you ask him that, here's what he'll tell you. He will tell you what he really means is that he he wants to do some of the things that girls do, like mm -hmm. play with the dollhouse, mm -hmm. or or you know he likes the color pink. That's fine, play with the dollhouse, but you're still a boy. I hope you'll respect my preferred adjectives. Of course, the only problem. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, That's I understand. exactly what he just said. Yeah, I understand that, but like he said, you still have to make sure they identify as a boy. It's, you know, he said, yeah, color color with a crayon that's pink, but. Yeah, I mean, but I just feel like there's a fine line, that's all. But but I think they know that is, is was my point. I think I believe that they know that they're not, not a three a girl. four year old child. No, they don't. They don't know that. Like they know they're a boy, but they don't. I mean, know. three or four. I think that's really young. I'm, I'm you know five six even. Like 
at that point, four, five, six, six. I think five and six, you still need to help them identify with who they are. I don't think that you, like, I think they know. <laughs> boys know that they're boys. Mm. Boys want to play with boys. Regular boys want to play G.I. Joes. Like, right. like. Right. You know what I mean? But, but, like, but they don't think, but, like, But when oh. they're four or five and six, but and then they start trying to veer and play with dollhouses, and then they want to start putting on dresses and do things that girls doing, like, that. that's okay, but still, like a, like, like you said, make sure that they, they can still identify with who they are as a boy. That's I think all. it's okay. Okay. I mean, I know we can go on, but I'm saying mm -hmm. I think it's, it, it is okay to some degree, but I feel like if once it starts becoming a pattern, like, that's a thing, like, they just want to do it, then... Yeah. Th then that's just what it is. <laughs> gotcha. Is what I'm saying. I, I I think like after so many times of seeing the pattern of that type of behavior, you start, <laughs> you know, you do question it, but it's just like, wow, like maybe my kid is gay. Like maybe my kid will be a, a lesbian. Maybe like my girl <laughs> wants to be a boy. I was a tomboy for forever. My mom thought I was gonna be <laughs> yeah. a lesbian. Me personally, I just don't agree with it. That's all. No, I, don't, I think a lot of people don't agree with it, mm -hmm. but as just, okay. The problem with my adjective comparison is that unlike pronouns, adjectives are in fact subjective. But my point was that the adjectives I use to describe myself are products of my self-perception. I cannot demand that others perceive me the way that I perceive myself. Right. My self-perception is not a joint project shared by me and the rest of human society. For adjectives, it's up to each individual to decide which ones they want to use to describe me. And in my case, a great many people use adjectives to describe me that I find quite disagreeable. I might feel insulted by some of those adjectives. I might lock myself in the bathroom and weep uncontrollably for, for hours because of them. I do that every day. But I cannot say that I'm being erased or delegitimized because other people refuse to see me the way that I see myself. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if their competing perception causes some sort of existential crisis for me, it only proves that I'm not so sure of my own self-perception, and therefore, I'm in no position to criticize anybody else's perception of me. As for pronouns, there is no subjectivity at all. It's not up to any individual, including myself, to decide which ones ought to be used. That question is settled by biological reality. The point of the pronoun is to describe that reality. Just as the point of a verb, like running, unless it's, unless it's used metaphorically, is to convey reality. If I say that somebody is running when they're really sitting, I've conveyed an untruth, whether because I'm confused or a liar or both. And if I call a man a she, I have also expressed an untruth, whether because I'm confused or a liar or both, or perhaps because I'm afraid of getting yelled at if I, if I tell the truth. So we should add coward alongside the options of mm. confused and liar. Well, uh, one thing I can tell you as a four-star chef myself, um, amateur chef, but I consider myself a four-star chef, you, your, your kitchen is not complete without great kitchen knives. And that's why you need Kamikota. Kamikota taps into more than 800 years of traditional techniques from Honshu, Japan, that have been honed and perfected by generations yeah. from start uh, polishing and sharpening. Kamikota knives can on top of that sale, you can get an addition. Go to Kamikota. Pronoun question led directly to the question, the ultimate. Somebody at Wahoo. I mean, the question, the ultimate and fundamental question, as far as I'm concerned, which my opponents were not very eager to answer. And that's a question I would like to throw out to you know, other members of the panel, actually, because just like the four year old can't answer what is a girl, well, this is one of the problems with this left wing gender ideology is that no one who espouses it can even tell you what these words mean. It's like, what is a woman? Well, can you tell me what a woman is? No, I can't, because but, it's not for me to say. I, womanhood looks different for everybody. What do, you, what do you define a woman as? An adult human female. And what does a female mean? Uh, what, well, that's how do you, how do you define a someone with, with female reproductive organs. Okay. Someone who's, you know, here's the thing. When you're, when you're female, it goes right down to your bones, your DNA. So that's why if someone dies, okay. we could dig up their bones 100 years from now. We have no idea what they believed in their head, but we can tell what sex they were because it's in, it's down in, it's, it's in, ingrained in every fiber of their being. Interesting. So I'm trying to understand. Your definition is that a woman is someone who is female, you said, right? Man, his, his nails look better than your nails right now. His nails look better <laughs> than your nails right now. No, nah, I'm not been, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not been there. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> the, the, the man, he got, he got the manicure on fleek right now. Babe.
I'm just letting you know. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. I'm trying to understand. Your definition is that a woman is someone thing? who is female, yeah. you said, right? Correct. Gotcha. There's okay. a biological female. So what happens if we have maybe someone who is female, identifies as a woman, right? You know, cisgender woman, right? As you explained, as you just explained, but maybe doesn't have the ability to reproduce. Well, maybe doesn't have those organs that you're talking about well, that are well, reproductive organs. Maybe. I have answered the question. You stood up here and said trans women are women. Yes. Tell me what you mean. What is a woman? Womanhood is something that, just as Ethan explained, I cannot define because I am not but myself. you used the well, word. So what did you mean when you said trans women are women if you don't know what it means? Right. So here's the thing. So I do not define what a woman is because I do not identify as a woman. Womanhood is something that is an umbrella term. It includes people that who... That describes what? People who identify as a woman. I identify as what? As a woman. What is... Wow, womanhood. I, I, I've, I've never heard it in that terms. And, 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 just, and, and just to be, you know, fully honest and, you know, not trying to bash them or, or trying to, you know, cast a, a, a negative aspersion on them. But mm -hmm. to me, I just feel like, you know, you know, they want to be women, obviously. You know, you know they want to be women and identify as women. But I, I really feel like they don't, based on this interview and what they're talking about right now is it seems like they don't really know what a woman is like um well maybe they know what a woman is but maybe they're trying to redefine the term woman and create it in a way where it kind of fits their lifestyle because of their ideology right now because because yeah. right now it, it, it's hard for me to call somebody a woman when you're sitting on here and your beard like your beard is bigger than my your, your beard is thicker than my beard <laughs> Like I can grow my beard out, and, and my beard can, it, 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 you know, it's gonna get pretty thick. But like, like, but for real, though, like for real, though, like for real, for real. But for like, it, it's just hard for me to do that. You know what I mean? I can't with you. It's just hard for me to do that. I, I mean, let me let him finish. Let me okay. let him finish. I got you. I got you. Okay. Let's go ahead. Who identify as a woman? I identify as what? As a woman. What is that? was to each their own. Okay. Each woman, each man, each person is going to have a different relation with their own gender identity and define it differently. That and so I'm trans women that. are women. Wait, no, but but if you're not like that can't be right. That can be right because I I feel like you're just you, you're just trying to modify the word woman. Yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, no, that's not right. That's not right was to each their own. Okay. Each woman, each man, each person is going to have a different relation with their own gender identity. It's going to have a different relation with their own gender identity. But because you have a relation with your own gender identity doesn't mean that whatever your own gender identity is doesn't make you a male or a female, depend, you know, whatever way it goes. But because it, it, because if that's the case, then society would be all misconstrued. Right. So just because if that's what you what. Basically, your ideology, ideology of what mm -hmm. you think, your what you how you feel inside yes. is supposed to make you identify as that. But that can't be right if you're not biologically. Yeah, I keep that. Har I keep harkening back to that part. Yeah, the, the biological terms. Yeah. And define it differently. And so, I'm trans women that. are women too. Okay. And you want to hold on, hold on. Again, you want to reduce? Uh oh, uh oh. Now, now, now. He got, he, he got, he got everybody clapping for him. Now he's gonna go in now. Everybody clapping for him. He's gonna go in. Now. Listen, you listen, tell me you what the word reduce, means, though. So you that's want to the reduce problem. women. You want to reduce men down to maybe just their genetics, our genitals, no. our chromosomes, right? That's what you're what saying. You is is that's a, what, what, what you want to do is what you want to do is appropriate women. You want to appropriate womanhood, okay? And turn it into basically a costume that can be worn. Ooh. Now, the answer continued for another 45 minutes after that, but that was really the end of the conversation. I could have gotten up and walked off the stage right there, which would have been funny. Um, the other side <laughs> was there to argue that trans women are women and that anyone can be a woman if that's how they feel about themselves, and yet they could not explain what they meant when they used that term. Trans women are women. What's a woman? Well, who knows? The statement trans women are women means nothing in that case. They don't know what they mean when they say it. They don't understand their own position. Game over. You notice the obscurantist tactic at work here because the bearded gentleman had declared in the previous segment uh, to the to raucous applause that trans women are women. And I asked him what he means and he immediately hopped on the circular logic merry-go-round rambling a bunch of hazy gibberish about how only women can define the word women. That doesn't make any sense because for one thing, he's not an elephant, but I'm sure he can tell me what an elephant is. 
Also, even the statement that only women can define women requires you to know what a woman is. Otherwise, how can you know who has the right to define it and who doesn't? Well, the answer is that he knows who a woman is because they're the ones who say they're women. And we know that they are right in their claims of being women because they're saying it. And they say they're women because they are women. And they are women because they say they're women. Around and around we go. Or they go, anyway. They hope to pull you onto the merry-go-round with them, making you as dizzy and confused as they are. Which is why it's important to have simple answers, simple definitions, simple responses. And you stick to them. Let them twirl around and tie themselves into knots. You're standing on solid ground. Stay there. One more clip worth playing. Uh, after a very awkward commercial break where everybody sat in silence. Awkward for them, anyway. You know, I thought the whole situation was pretty hilarious. We came back with a, with a supposed gender expert and college professor who provoked applause from the trained SEALs in the audience when she hit me with the old, why do you care so much routine? Hmm. There's biological sex and then there is gender identity. Part of me wants to ask why you care so much uh, because right? it's really not right? that big of a deal. Oh yeah, can I answer right. that? Um, I, I, I'd, love to, I'd love to answer that question. I, I care about the truth. So, so basic truth matters. I want to live in a society where people okay, care about fine. the truth and we're grounded in truth. Right. Um, I care about children, and this, these insane ideas about too. gender are being, are being foist on kids, um, and that, that bothers me quite a bit. I care about the women who are having their opportunities stolen from them. I care quite a bit, yeah. Now, Ooh, another point... I like, I like the points he made right there. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what do you think mm -hmm. about that? I mean, just from being a... You, you're a woman, obviously. A, a, a beautiful, melanated woman at that. <laughs> But I'm just saying, like, 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 what do you think about that comment that he just made right there at the end? I mean, I feel like he's 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 right. I feel like you know, women. I think people are. I think it's okay that if you want to identify and say that you know you want to embrace womanhood and you want to you know embrace feminism to be who you are, to be who you feel inside. But I mean, when it comes down to when it just comes down to it, I'm just like, if you're just not a woman, you're just not like, and that's okay. Like, mm -hmm. and it, it, but it's still fine that you want to live the way that you want to live. Like, I, 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 you're just not, if you don't know that, you know, if you can't produce, if you don't have a, a, a vagina, you, you don't have a, 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 you know, there are women out there that, that, that don't have menstrual cycles that, that, that can't get pregnant, you know, but <laughs> We all have the same parts, right. you know, like at the end of the day, we all like we, we know that much. We identify with a woman by being able to reproduce. Yeah. So or get I, pregnant. I, I, I would have to agree with him. I would have to agree with him. But the thing is that when you talk about why do you care so much? I don't think it's necessarily people so much care. It's, it's the it's the fact that like at this point, it almost feels like it's being forced upon people to acknowledge right people who say they are something that they're not like technically biologically are not yeah and, and there are and now it's to the point where now those people we got to let them into the bathroom with with people where where you should feel you're in a safe environment and mm -hmm. you know schools and uh locker rooms like you know spas and places where you feel like you should be around people where you should who, have that type of privacy yeah the way that it's always been. Because that's a big deal. That's a, especially for kids that, like, you know, I, I know now going back as young as, like, high school, there there are kids that are transgender at, at that age that, you know, still identify at that point. But I, I would raise all kind of hell if you let a boy right, <laughs> come into the locker room. And, and then as a, even as a parent, I yeah. would be pissed. And even going back to grade school, like like when a boy goes into a girl's locker room or, or the girl goes into the boy's locker room, it's like, what are you doing? Right. This is completely like, hey, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, so it's the same thing. And I it's like not, it's like thing. I said, and it's not necessarily, it's like, I, I think that's the part that people care about. Like it's not any, like they could, I could care less about anything else. Yeah. <laughs> They're more concerned with how it changes, like the social construct. Yeah. Yeah. You know? their opportunities stolen from them i care quite a bit yeah now another point i didn't have the chance to make there is that um is that sh sh she wants me to care she says why do you care well i could have said because you want me to the other two people on the stage they want me to care also their whole job is to go around insisting that everybody care about this issue these people march in literal parades with banners and floats screaming into bullhorns that we all should care it's just that they want me to care in only a very specific way. 
and to draw very specific conclusions. Mm -hmm. So when she says, why do you care so much? What she really means is, why has your concern about this issue led you to conclusions that I disapprove of? Right. And so I gave her the answer. And it's important to always emphasize that our first concern is not fairness, it's not sports, it's not privacy, it's not even safety. Those are all concerns and they're important, but our primary motivation is to defend truth for its own sake. Mm -hmm. If there was a serious campaign to convince everyone that squares are circles, I'd be arguing almost as passionately against it. I'd even go on Dr. Phil to talk about shapes. It's not because I woke up one morning feeling very passionate about geometry. I didn't choose the fight. They're the ones who decided to wage an assault on this basic truth, and so I can choose to either surrender the ground to them or defend it. I don't want to live in a world where people don't know the difference between squares and circles. Mm -hmm. I also don't want to live in a world where people don't know the difference between men and women. And it really is as simple as that. And as I said, we should keep it simple. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from the Matt Wall Show. If you hey, said, let's just keep it simple. I just think that it did. Yeah, I agree. Just keep it simple. You know, don't make it more complex than what it actually is. I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, I, I was a super tomboy when I <laughs> when I was younger. But I mean, I, my mom never was like. You know, well, sometimes she, you know, where yeah, she was. You need to put yeah, she was. And I was like, like, but even to say that though, like, as much as I was against it, and it wasn't even like, because at the time, even to say that, I still liked boys. I never liked girls. Yeah. Like, never. But, but I think, that, <laughs> but I think the perception from your mom is like, oh, hold on, no, 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 no. You need to put this dress on. You do too much. Uh uh uh. uh. You but, know what I mean? but see, it's the same. It's the same thing. Like uh -huh. she was forcing me to do something that I wasn't comfortable with mm -hmm. until I came of age to actually realize <laughs> that. Oh yeah, I am. You know, I do want to wear tight jeans. I do want to put on cute dresses. I do want to look girly. You know, but I did that when I was ready. Mm -hmm. Like when I felt like I had grown into that. Mm -hmm. You know, but even to say like that really kind of proves what I was trying to explain to you. Like, you know, the fact that she was doing that to me just kind of made me not want to do it even more. Gotcha, like, gotcha. but she never, like, she never like was, Oh, you know, talked down to me or bad to me about just being a tomboy. She just wanted me to dress like a girl, yeah. you know, yeah. but, but she embraced it. You know, she, <laughs> She embraced it eventually because it took forever before I, I broke that habit. I was just, because. <laughs> nah, I'm telling you. But that's what I'm saying is like, yeah. you know, even to say like I was a tomboy. I feel like as long as I can remember, as long as I can remember, like playing basketball outside, playing football with boys. Like I was, I was that girl. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I never was like into girls. It was just something I had. I just grew into. But I, I never was confused that I, that I was a boy. Like yeah. I never thought that. I, it was like I wanted to act like one. Yeah. But I didn't. I never thought I was a boy. But but see, you know, <laughs> even with even with this whole video and everything that we watched and we kind of start talking about like in regards to the children identifying, I feel like that's part of the responsibility as a parent. Is to helping children identify. That's part of it. It's helping your child identify with being a male or a female. So not necessarily her trying to force you to wear a dress. I just feel like her. That's her responsibility as a woman, as a mother, to show you like we're women. You know, this is what we need to she dress said it. And, and and dress like, and this is what we need to do. So that's why I was saying that. that that's like my my thing about it is that like this type of thing that that we're seeing in regards to like them identifying with women and womanhood and them mm -hmm. being men. Like, my thing is, is like, ha how that affects, like, young children that see that. You know, like, that's my thing. It it's the children that grow up and get influenced by what, they, by what they're seeing. And, and, and that's, like, the, the, the more pivotal and probably one of the more, one of the most, you know, detrimental things to, to transgender and identifying with your sexuality is like dealing with children and how they're influenced by stuff that they see on social media, TV, things like that. So I, I think more than ever, I think that children need to be guided so that they know their, so they know what their 
identity is as far as gender goes because right now I feel like it can be skewed so much and it can be influenced by so many different ways especially on from the outside that's all I got to say I, I that's all I got like to say the, the, the fact that, <clears throat> that, it's, that it's being skewed though like in terms of the, the skew part of it is just because of what's actually being forced upon, upon people to accept <clears throat> ver- like the truth versus reality and that's what he's and, talking about the you truth. know like that part of it I, I do feel like that part of it is skewed but like I mean, you could say that I was, I had skewed thoughts, if that's the case, you know, because uh, a perfect example is like, I, I 1000% was not into girls, never thought about it, never wished upon, like, but I was tomboyish right. as, as, boyish as they come. Like, mm-hmm. I wanted the sneakers, I wanted the J's, I wanted the jerseys, I wanted to, you know, ride skateboards and bicycles and play football and, and all the girls would be sitting in the... <laughs> Right, and, sitting and, on and, the line. I'm and, like, and, and, shoot, and, and I'm see, out here playing. And see, that's okay, but but you still wanted to identify as a woman. So, like I said, you wanted to, you know, be able to wear certain things, but you still identified as a woman. So, well, why is yeah. that okay then? Like, you know, because to me that was normal. Like, I mean, that was normal. That, 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 that was, was your normal of, reality. It was normal to me. Like, yeah. and when I see it, and, and the thing is, though, I feel like with with children, like. I used to feel like when we'd be in the mall walking around with the kids and stuff and you'd see two girls holding hands in the mall and stuff like I would feel some type of way like letting them see that <laughs> because at the time I just didn't feel like it was normal for them to see it and, and it would confuse them because they would see that mm-hmm. but at this point I'm just like it's 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 gotten to a point of normalcy where people want to be who they are in front of everybody and I, I you know it is what it is but I just feel like there's a point where you just okay. Well, I mean, you just know. Yeah. I mean, and, you just. But know. like, but with that too, also like like you said, it's the education part with your children too. Like kind of teaching them when they see those things like that, like teaching them, so they so they have a better understanding. Rather, so, but what if you have a kid that rather wants than, to rather than seeing it and just being influenced by, it, but having parents that, that that see that they're seeing these influences and being able to. Talk to them about it so that they understand it on a different level rather than just seeing it and then just trying to emulate the behavior. That's all. I'm just, okay. You just have to adapt to mm-hmm. the to the, to the the normalcy because I feel mm-hmm. like as a tomboy, that was normal to me. And I didn't see anything wrong with it. Mm-hmm. Even as a girl, like, it, you know, all my friends would dress girly and I was still, I didn't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I didn't care. But... You know, for like a gay kid, I, I feel the same way with them. Like they feel like what they're doing and how they act is normal. Like that's normal. It's a natural thing for them, but that doesn't change the identity of who they are biologically. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah, have a discussion. Tell them, yeah, okay, you shouldn't be wanting to wear a dress, but if that's what they want to do, then yeah. But I like the video. <laughs> I, I like the video a lot because I, I just like Matt Walsh's. You know his his foundation is, is just just about truth and and and, that, and that's what I'm here for too. It's just the truth. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. So I agree, Derek. <laughs> so if y'all enjoyed this video, sorry it's a little bit long, y'all. We 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 were having a whole discussion here. But... Hey, you, hey, that's why we're here. We're here to discuss these yeah. matters as um, long as it's gonna take. Right. As long as it's gonna take. <laughs> if y'all enjoyed this, be sure y'all give us a big thumbs up. Drop us some comments. Let us sure. know y'all's thoughts on this video, what we talked about here, and how y'all feel about that. And if there's any parents out there, I would be curious to know, like, if there's any parents out there that, you know, have been in these situations that, you know, uh, uh, can 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 understand what I'm trying to explain. Mm-hmm. Okay, like, I just want to know. Yeah, we need everybody to chime in. Yeah. So, uh, other than that, if ain't nobody else told you, we love you. We gonna see y'all next time. Yeah, absolutely, man. We salute y'all. We yeah. appreciate y'all for watching. Bye.